Good morning and welcome to the fourth meeting of the Pauv and Chaffrey Drainage Commission Scotland Bill Committee in 2018. The first item on our agenda today is to consider the merits of the three objections to the Bill. Evidence on the objections was taken at our meeting on 13 December 2017. Following that meeting, we received the responses we sought from the promoters and Scottish Water. Earlier this year, the committee agreed to defer further consideration of the objections until the issue regarding the accuracy of the land plans had been resolved. Now that new land plans and an accompanying explanatory report have been submitted and considered by the committee, we will now return to consider the objections. Giving all the evidence we have taken to date, we will now consider the merits of each objection. While the committee is required to consider the merits of objections, it is optional for it to accept or reject the objections. The first objection is in the name of Gareth Bruce, and I would like to invite members to make any comments they have on the objection from Mr Bruce. Thank you, um, the convener. One of the, the, the main thrusts of Gareth Bruce's objection is that his property does not drain into the POW as it's, it's too far away. And, and I am um, content, given the, the, the evidence that, that we have heard and the investigations that we have done, that Mr Bruce's property does benefit from the POW as surface and foul water from his property drains directly in, into the POW. Therefore, he is, is liable for... Um, Costings, and I, I'm also content um, that the bill contains suitable safeguards in terms of the definition of land categories, which was another area um, that, that concerned um, Mr. Bruce, um, and, and I would be minded to reject his um, objection. Alison Harris. I would agree with Mary Fee. I think I would be very minded to uh, reject Mr. Bruce's objection on the points raised by. Um, Mary, Mary at this stage as well, but on various other issues as well. I don't think he fully really appreciates that, you know, when you look at his objection, you know, referring to a surveyor using fictitious values and commissioners in relation to giving compensation, I don't think he's really appreciating that they don't really have that sort of money. It's the heritors who are paying into this commission and it's not really the commissioner's money as such. So, no, I, I feel that the overriding part is that definitely his property does benefit from the POW and as such he should be included and pay. So can I say it's the view of the committee that none of the objections from Mr Bruce um, should be upheld and that the committee disagrees with Mr Bruce and it um, views that his property does benefit from the POW? Yes, I do. Okay, in that case I can confirm uh, that the committee rejects the objection from Mr Bruce in full. Uh, the second objection is in the joint names of Mr and Mrs Beesham. I'd like to invite members to make any comments they have on that particular objection. Um, thank you, um, convener. And, and in a similar um, vein to the, the, the previous um, objection, the objection in the name of Mr and Mrs Beesham again says that their property um, does not have um, any benefit from the POW and they are not liable to any costs. Um, and again, um, because of the investigations that the committee has done and the responses that we have received from the promoters of the bill and the commissioners, I am content that their property does benefit from, from the POW and they are um, liable to pay um, a, a charge to, towards it. Um, and, and the fact that they have not um, paid before is un unfortunate, but the, the land plans have been withdrawn, uh, redrawn, and it is quite clear that everyone that benefits should pay. Um, and, and I am minded to reject that objection. Alison Harris. I agree with Mary Fee. I think that the points she raised are absolutely correct, and I'm also minded to reject this objection. Okay. So I think it's clear that the committee does not wish to uphold the objections in the name of Mr and Mrs Beedrum. Therefore, the committee's decision is that the objection is rejected in full. Finally, the uh, third objection is in the name of Tom Davis. Again, I'd like to invite members to make any comment. Well, I think Tom Davis is in a slightly different position. And the fact that, you know, when we took evidence from Tom Davis himself, he had to actually admit that you know, the, the inclusion, it was in his title deeds that he's entitled to pay and should be paying. And therefore, I think that it's only correct that it's in your title deeds we should uphold that and he should be involved in paying. Mary Fee. Uh, thank you, um, <coughs> convener. I would agree with the points that have been made by um, Alison Harris. Um, Tom um, Davis raises um, 
several points, and he, and he raises a very relevant point in relation to um, the right of appeal in setting of the, in the annual budget. And I think it's a, 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 fair, a, a fair point that, that Mr Davis um, raises. And again, it's something that I think the, the commissioner should look um, very favourably on um, having a, a, a right of appeal. In regards to the rest of the objections um, he, he makes, he, he did come and give evidence to committee. And I think he acknowledged at the end of that evidence session that he was liable um, to pay, given the proximity of his property to the power, and he accepts that he needs to pay. But I would uphold the part of his objection relating to right of appeal. I, I Thank you. So there are three elements to the um, objection um, from Mr Davis. Um, with regards to the first two parts um, relating to benefited land and the uh, requirements of heritors to pay towards the promotion of the bill, is the committee content that this should not be upheld? Yes. Um, but with regards to Mr Davis' objection on concerning a right of appeal to the level of the annual budget, is the committee content to uphold that particular element? Yes. yes. Okay, well, I can confirm that the committee, um, in that case, then uh, rejects the two parts of Mr Davies' objection concerning benefited land and the requirements for heritors to pay towards promotion. However, the committee does um, uphold the element relating to the level of the annual uh, budget with regards to an appeal. Um, with that, uh, that concludes our consideration and disposal of the objections. Objectors will be contacted by the clerk and informed of the decision taken. As our next item is in private to consider a draft report, I will shortly suspend the meeting. Firstly, however, I would like to confirm that members of the committee are now able to lodge amendments to the bill and the clerk will liaise with the promoters accordingly. The next meeting of the committee will be on Wednesday 20 June 2018 at 10 a.m., at which the committee will consider any amendments lodged for consideration stage and decide under rules 9A, 9.7B and 7C whether any adversely affect private interests and, if so, whether they have sufficient merit that there is a possibility of their being agreed to after further scrutiny. Um, I now suspend the meeting and move into private session.